Hey, Russ, remember when John painted his house that crazy color? Oh, yeah. Oh, because he wanted to protest. <laughs> yeah, he had to prove he had to prove his point. Didn't he? he did. He right. did. Well, guys, stick around. We're going to tell you all about that story and about other things, but all having to do with painting the outside of your house. Should you do it yourself? Should you hire a professional and the things you need to know in order to do a good job? Right? Yes, indeed. All right. So stick around and we'll be right back after this. Yeah. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And today we are talking about, let's jump right into it, exterior painting, right? Yeah, it's quite a job. And, you know, if you can't do it yourself, because some people are scared of heights, and if not all people are fortunate enough to have a one-story building. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're getting ahead, Russ, because we're going to talk about that closer to the end. Okay. All right. But the key is, should you paint the outside of your house or not? Well, it depends on whether it needs it or well, not. No, obviously. <laughs> well, some people do we paint their house when it doesn't need it. color every week. Well, that's well, true. Some people, I suppose, true. could. I guess some people could. But the key is, should you paint your house yourself or should you hire a professional? Let's talk about what it takes. So first uh -huh. of all, the thing that people need to consider first is the number one thing you should consider or the first thing you should consider is the tools that you need to do this job. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes if you already have most of the tools... That can really play a factor Gee. into like whether you make this decision or not, if you have Indeed. all the tools. Right. Okay, so what are the tools that people should consider? Well, obviously, the first tool is paint. That's kind of a tool, because yep. if you don't have paint, you can't do it. Paint, and then you've got rollers, brushes, and sprayers. Correct. And we are going to put a link in the bottom, because how much paint is determined by the square footage of your house and things of that nature. So in the description below, I'm going to put a link in for um, a paint calculator that we found online, which is Sherwin-Williams has an interior and an exterior paint um, calculator. The exterior one is not as easy to find. Like when you Google it, it doesn't show up automatically. Uh -huh. So we're going to put the link directly to the exterior paint calculator so you know how to do that. And it's really simple. Yeah. You just basically say how high and how wide and how many windows. That's the things you need to, to factor in. Now, if your windows are huge, that is obviously a bigger yeah, factor. Yeah, if you've got big picture frame windows, mm -hmm. then obviously you're going to need less paint because yep. you've got to take that out of the equation. But, but that will probably factor into time because you might have more trim. Yes. So, And you might not need less paint, but less of one paint and more of another, mm -hmm. possibly. So, absolutely. So, brushes, yeah. rollers, sprayers. And extra use a time sprayer. to tape up the windows. So, so tape, that's yeah. another tool that you need. Um, the other tools that you need, possibly, you probably need a power washer of some kind. Yeah. So if you already have a power washer, that makes it different. Tape. Still a uh, metal brush or... A uh, brush of some sort, ladders. depending on the type of siding you have. Yep, ladders or siding or scaffolding, rather. Ladders yep. or scaffolding you're going to need. Tarps, because you're going to want to have a tarp to put down before you paint and before yep. you scrape, at least. We'll talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit later. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. You've got to have all these tools together. So if you don't, if you already have some of these tools, though, like, for example, we already own a power washer. Yeah. So for us... Power washing the house is a regular. And to be honest, most homeowners should probably have a power washer because even if you're not going to paint your house, it can really keep your paint and your siding much nicer if you yeah. if you actually have a power washer and you power wash regularly. So that's something that you probably should have anyway. Um, but the prep, let's talk about the prep since we're kind of talking about that power mm -hmm. washing. So the prep work involves, well, first of all, you got to lay down a tarp. You want to explain why? Yeah, because any peeling paint could be lead-based. Yep. And you don't want that on the floor where kids can the pick floor. it up and chew it. So The ground. Yeah, on the ground. So um, but even what you if do kids is put gonna... your tarp down so when you do scrape it or brush it off, you can collect it up really easily and funnel it into the bin. Sure. And it's not even about just that, because even if you don't have kids, you don't want lead-based paint leaking into the ground. No. Because even if it dissolves into the ground, it then has an influence on the grass and on the soil and makes mm -hmm. things, um, you can't use that soil for growing things even, or at least you no. wouldn't want to grow any vegetables in any soil that's been damaged or been tainted by lead. Yeah. 
So, um, so that's a very big thing. You want to put that tarp down for sure. Especially if you're selling your house, because if an appraiser comes around and sees a lead, you know, paint flakes all over the place, and they don't always he know, will make you clean it up. And they don't know whether they're lead-based paint or not. No. And if your house was built before 77, they're going to assume it's lead-based paint chips. Yes. And they're going to make you clean them all up. But even still, even if you don't clean it up because an appraiser makes you do it, you really should do that anyway. Yeah. Just as good, just, just as good to be managed. Those are yeah, all just really important management. things. You're going to be scraping. So obviously you need the scrapers. Yeah. Um, and then you should also power wash. Power wash, brush it down, clean it first, power wash it, get rid of any cobwebs. Yeah. So most professionals I've spoken to say that you should first scrape it because that gets uh -huh. the big chunks off. And yeah. then you should power wash it. Yeah. Because then you're taking off like the little tiny flakes and you really get in. However... Mm -hmm. If you're power washing and you have bare wood, then you do need to let it dry. Yes. So you need to make sure it's a dry time of year when you're doing this, if you're going to do this yeah. project. Before you may have you, to do it in Before in you paint it, you would need probably two or three days for it to dry out properly. Yeah. If you do a good power wash job, you could probably paint the next day or maybe the day after. So the power washing, you might have to wait a week though. Because it might yeah. be that you're power washing your house one weekend and then the next weekend you're actually Paint, have the time to yeah. do the painting. Mm -hmm. Or some people do this. Some people will do one side at a time. Yeah. And they'll break the job up that way. It makes it a yeah. lot more the manageable. The next prep thing. So the other prep thing that you need to do once you get the scraping done, once you get the power washing done, is you also need to... You need to check um, all your side in. See if there's any repairs that need doing before yep. you paint it. Like so caulking. Caulking, yeah. I do opportunity to do the caulking. Mm -hmm. Check your stucco if there's any patchwork needs doing. Yep. Now's the brilliant time to do it before you paint because then it won't show up. Because Rotten it's wood. one coat of, of paint. Rotten yep. wood, if you've got wood siding, you can cut a piece out. Yep. and implant a new piece yep. even with vinyl siding you can cut a length just get the same type of siding have some most people have some spare lengths in, yeah most, in the garage or in the most attic. people have extra siding after they side their yep. house and when houses transfer most sellers are going to leave that siding behind unless they've used it uh -huh. so yeah so repairing the rotten wood patching the stucco replacing maybe chipped vinyl that's been you know yeah and, and a aluminum. lot of people chip the vinyl they go around with a strimmer when they're mowing the lawn or you know and they take those weeds out around the the corner of the house so let me do a little catch it. let me do a little interpretation a strimmer is a weed whacker sorry yes <laughs> it's a, we call them strimmers in the uk i don't um, know why i don't know what strimming is i don't know what a strim is so how can you strim i don't understand okay but weed whacking we get that right yeah. we get it you're whacking it the a weeds brand. a brand of weed whacker was a strimmer possibly and, it was and i the think most it might have been one. i think weed whacker might have been a brand over here too okay. but at least weed whacker makes sense we're whacking those weeds anyway so obviously we've talked about the tools that you need and the prep work that you need to do beforehand but then let's talk about how much time it takes to paint a house and i mean it's not just the painting that you need to consider when you're factoring in the time i mean one of the things you need to factor in is how much scraping do you have to do yeah, or are you scrubbing by hand or using a power washer? Absolutely, because that makes a big difference in time. Like, oh, absolutely. Scrubbing a house by hand takes a lot longer than a power washer And would. it's fun with a power washer because you can <laughs> get everything soaking wet. <laughs> absolutely. But then here's the other factor. Another time factor is are you painting the same color or are you changing colors? Now, why is that a factor? Because if you have a white house and you are painting it a darker color, that's no big deal because you're going with a darker color and you probably only need two coats of that paint. Uh -huh. However, if you're going from a bright or a dark color down to white, you might have to do three or four coats of yeah. good quality paint. And obviously that'll factor into your cost, but more importantly, it's gonna factor into your time, big time. Because if you take it from a dark color down to a white or a light brown or a tan or something, huge, huge difference. Yeah, you've difference. got to get rid of that dark color behind it. So, yeah, completely. And then how much trim do you have to paint? Because oh, the hate more windows trim. you have, the more doors you have, the more trim you've got. And I hate trim. So, I mean, I love trim, but I hate painting yeah. it. In fact, when we do a paint job, whether it's interior or outside, 
this guy's the one who always does the trim work. I did the trim work. Yeah. He's got the steady hand. I've got the slash it on, like, you know, slop it on. And every time we've painted uh, well, a roller, yeah, we painted the sorry. garage a couple of times. And because uh -huh. um, we only did like one coat when we did it, because it's a garage. But you always did the trim. And then obviously how much repair, when you do get it scraped and everything down, how much repair work you actually have to do. Like if you have minimal repair work, well, then that's not going to take much time. If you yeah. only have a little bit of like joints that need caulking and things like if that. If it's all in good shape, then yeah. no problem. Yep, exactly. That's three of our items. The fourth one, however, is color. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about John and why he painted his, his house that crazy color. So first of all, let's talk about... He painted his color a bright, uh, he painted his house a bright purple. And it had been like yes. a white before that. Uh-huh, absolutely. And the main reason... So he had a dispute over uh, the municipality wouldn't allow him to replace some of his... Outbuildings. Derelict outbuildings that were in disrepair. Well, and, and you have to keep in mind, he bought this foreclosed house. It yes. was a foreclosure house. And he knew there was going to be a ton of stuff. But what he saw was he saw he had this great big, really terrible couple of barns out back. And he thought, great, and it's on five acres of land. So he thought, great, I can tear those down and put up a new structure, which would look so much nicer. And he nicer. wanted to grow plants and stuff like that and yeah. do like garden landscaping. Yeah, and he wanted to have a great like big garden. That's what you can yeah. do. People who buy five acres, they want it for something. Yeah. They either want it because they like the woodlands or they want to have a really large garden. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to have a hobby farm, yeah. something like that. And he had five acres. And so he said, great. And this, these barns and outbuildings were actually quite a ways back. Fix they were about, the house up. But yep. unfortunately, the barns were in disrepair. Yep. And so he asked, instead of having multiple uh, barns that are collapsing, can I put up one pole barn? Yeah. Can I take these down and put up one pole barn? And the municipality told him, nope. no, nope. no, nope. no. Nope. Nope. So because he wanted some control over his property, yeah, he painted his house a bright purple. Barney purple. Yeah, like Barney or... the. The yeah, color of the Barney, dinosaur. not Barney as in a barn, but like as in Barney the dar the dinosaur. Yes, as in yes. that color of purple. There's <laughs> he no has the choice of his own is color. There's no HOA there. <laughs> but color is a factor. Yes. So there are different things. And I'm going to put a link down below. El Decor has a list of 50 home color combinations. Some of wow, them are a little that wild. Many. Yeah, 50 different ones that you can choose. That you can choose to do any color combination you want. Of course. But if you want some inspiration, if you don't already know what colors you want, and I say colors because oftentimes you'll have up to three colors in a house yeah. when you're painting. You're going to have the actual house color. Then you're going to have the trim color. And then thirdly and lastly, you're going to have the, um, the door color. So like the front door is often a could be a completely different color. Yeah, it might be the same as the trim. It might not. But I'm going to put up a link to the 50 home color combinations. The type of home, however, that you have it could influence your colors. So, for example, a stucco home is going to be painted certain colors that you would never paint a regular. Like, you would probably not normally paint a home a bright purple. Stucco homes oftentimes are painted in those bright blues, bright pinks, bright greens, bright yellows, because yeah. they just have that. It's part of that stucco style. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't paint a Victorian bright 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 pink no a victorian house you wouldn't do you remember that house we sold a couple of years ago it was the house was green the trim was red but the trim had a secondary trim color that was brown and it never crossed my mind that it looked like a gingerbread house but we had so many people call it the gingerbread house that i actually renamed it in our system yeah as and i went that makes sense and it did make it sense did with the architect like gingerbread house. and and it made sense with the architecture of that yeah. house so your color of your house though is going to be somewhat based on the architecture a victorians victorians are going to have certain color combinations yep. edwardians are going to have other color combinations so the the other thing in re choosing the color is why are you painting like, are you painting the whole house because you just want to touch up some spots? Because obviously, if you just want to touch up spots of what you already have, you're going to stick to the color you already have. So, I mean, why are you painting? Are you painting because you want to have a complete change of color? Because if you want a complete change of color, well, then, you know, that makes a difference. You have the whole world at your feet as to what you can do. But if you want to keep it similar to what you have, then that limits your colors. Because if you already have a white house yeah. like we do... Um, mm -hmm. that kind of limits your colors. 
Yeah, I think if we paint, I think it will be a completely different it will, look. It would be a completely different Because I know your favorite color is the Wedgwood blue yes. with the white trim. Yes. So the last factor, however, when it comes to painting your house on the outside is what is the cost? Yeah. All right. And that is really the biggest factor for a lot of people. Cost is obviously substantially less if you can do it yourself. Yeah. If you're okay with heights, if you've got a two story house. Like ours, we um, will never paint our house ourselves because no. we will probably hire a pro because neither Russ nor I do ladders very well. But it will probably cost us for our two story house, it'll probably cost us about eight grand to get it painted. So the a pro is going to cost you anywhere from 2000 if you have a tiny little house all the way up to 10,000 if you have a larger house, but yeah. it can go as high as, like if you have a 3,000 square foot house, it could go as high as 20, yeah. 25,000. So, so depending on the size, square the footage of The average in the United States for a house is about between five and 7,000 is the average in yeah. the United States. However, the average for a five gallon bucket, which is what you would get of paint, is $225 per bucket. And if you have to have two you're going to need a minimum of two buckets so you're at least 500 yep. it will cost you we have factored it out because of the tools you need to buy or rent the sprayers and all the things the the brushes the tarps the tape the all of those things you're looking at probably two thousand dollars to paint an average size house yourself yeah because even the five gallon buckets that doesn't take into consideration the trim that's just no. actually paint in the main part of the house correct you might get two gallons of your trim color and probably have to get 10 to 15 gallons of... Of paint yeah. for the, the rest of the The average side. house takes anywhere from 15 from fifteen to 20 gallons yeah. of paint to paint is what I was for my research. Yeah. So that's why about $1,000 for the paint, and that includes the trim paint as well. Um, mm -hmm. So about $1,000 for the paint and then another 1000 for the tools that you need to buy or rent um, to do the job. Yes. And then... so. So for $2,000, you can probably paint a good, you know, 1,500 square foot house. Um, oh, but yeah. what about the time? So everybody, you know, time is money. So the question is, you have to weigh up. How much is your time worth? How much money do you have? Those are the factors yeah. to weigh up. So what do you guys think? Give us a comment below. Let us know. Would you paint your own house or would you always hire a pro? Really curious. Yeah. And then what percentage would you hire a pro for? Would you... Do the repair work first. Ah, would you want to do the prep work and the repair work and then just hire Make them to sure paint it? Make sure it's done and then just hire That's them to paint point. it. a good point. Some painters won't do that, though, because some painters don't want to guarantee their work if they haven't done the prep because mm -hmm. they want to make sure the prep is done right. Yeah. So you do have to make sure you talk to a painter. If you want to do that, if you want to do yeah. the prep work first, ask the painter before you start trying to save money on doing the prep work yourself. Ask the person you plan to hire um, for the painting job what they're what they allow yeah. because they might charge you for prep work anyway because they might have to go in and do more prep work even if you think you've done the prep work so if you're gonna have mm -hmm. to pay them for prep anyway don't do it yourself in the comments below let us know would you prefer to hire a pro to paint your house or would you prefer to do it yourself and speaking of that do us a favor if you've gotten any value from this content do us a favor click like subscribe turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content thanks for joining us today if you decide to paint your house shoot me an email with your before and after i'd love to see we'd love oh, to see yeah, it i'd love to see it feel free to email those to us at kimberly at tamthomes.com thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week bye for now bye